Hello, Helena. I'm Jana May, and I am a realtor with Exit Magic City Realty in Birmingham, Alabama. I live in Helena, Alabama, and love everything about my hometown since 2010. If you live in Helena, or and have lived in Helena, I'm sure you've heard about or read no sleep in Helena. But do you know who the creator of that blog is? If not, you are about to meet him now. We are very fortunate to have Huey Woodman join us today on Business Unusual. Huey currently sits on the uh, Helena City Council in place five. So without further ado, let's bring Huey on. Hello there. Yay. Yes. Huey, welcome to Business Unusual. Um, please tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, my name is um, Harold Edward Woodman. Um, of course, I use the initial Hugh to call myself Huey. Um, I ran a blog a while back. Um, um, I'm married to my wife for 28 years. Um, she's a science teacher at ECCS. Uh, we have three grandchildren. Uh, I'm sorry, we have three grown children who used to attend Helena schools. Okay, the youngest was so actually... Young. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, the youngest was the first graduating class of Helena High, so wow. um, she got to have that distinction. I do have a grandchild now. Uh, my son's an engineer up north, um, um, North Alabama in Tuscumbia, and um, his wife Courtney. That they have a child, and so I'm officially a grandparent. So congratulations! Yeah, so I feel like I've, I've accomplished something. I've actually gone two generations. So yes, you have accomplished a lot, a whole lot. Um, by the way, I love educators so much that I married one. Yes. And yes. partially raised one. Oh, did you? Oh, yes, so you're from a family done. of teachers too. Huh? You're from a family of teachers then. Yeah, yeah, educators. I'm like, why I go to law school? Because <laughs> you argue. <laughs> That'll probably get cut. Anyway. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, my, um, my mom and two of my sisters are teachers. So I completely- Oh, wow. So yeah. You've got to be called. You yeah, totally, it, it I really, could not do it. It totally is a calling. Um, my wife is the, um, I think I said she was a, the, the science teacher. She's a chemistry teacher. And she, um, I think one year she taught French. So um, um, she's, you know, so when, wow. you know, when, when I got sick, she was like scrubbing everything down. I think as soon as I told her that I had got exposed, she had um, separated us. We were, we were like in different bedrooms, different parts of the house. Uh, she came and checked on me. Um, you know, I, I, I try to be very optimistic in my, you know, in my post, you know, always gr grinning and stuff. But yeah, it, it was bad for a few days, but she was there and um, oh, she awesome. made sure everything in the house is sterilized. So um, that was a very positive thing. In case you don't know, I hope you don't mind. Um, Huey was diagnosed po or positive, tested positive for COVID-19 and um, so far, blessings, blessings he's had. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, no, it, it was, it was, um, I was fortunate because um, someone who did test positive told me because I was on immune suppressants. And um, so I had the opportunity of knowing when I was exposed and being able to count those days and tell that to the doctor. So um, I, I'm, I've been fortunate. I haven't had a complication. Um, I think it's been two days where I hadn't had any um, real symptoms. I think there was three days that were really bad. Sorry. Did you have headaches? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I had a headache and at first allergies. And I think when that started, um, I said, okay, I probably need to get tested since I know I was exposed. And um, I went down to urgent care. Um, it's about time urgent care. In yeah, I love that place. Yeah, they had you pull around to the back. Um, they did the, the test up the nose and it, they, around 48 hours, they gave me the result. Okay. So then I said, okay, well, you know, I think previously I had already been isolating myself, but I still went to the doctor's appointment. I still went to the notary. Um, I even went through a drive through But um, once I knew that was positive, I just totally locked down and just stayed in the house and, um, you know, just went and set it outside in the sun and hope that the sun would somehow irradiate me or something. But um, I had some good help from doctors who knew what they were doing. Yeah. Oh, and I, I that's the first place I go when I have a sniffle or a slip and fall. While yeah, showing uh, a house. <laughs> I don't know. If, I'm not going to. I had a, um, another doctor who had me on the immune suppressants. And he was like, come off the immune suppressants, you know. So yeah. 
that's the reason I'm just amazed that um, it's been so light. Um, I had like three bad days and the rest of it's been, you know, kind of positive. So. And keep sharing that. Oh. Yeah. Plus, and I think a lot of prayers. You're, you're a tough dude. Uh, I'm a lucky dude. <laughs> you is a tough dude. guy, Woodman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My occupation, I'm a technology support, support manager at Blue Cross. Um, I've been at Blue Cross since 1997. Wow. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that was actually the job that brought me to Helena. Um, so that was... Um, um, Thank you, Blue Cross. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Blue Cross. And Blue Cross <laughs> is really an awesome place to work. They've been, you know, really nice, um, especially with everything going on about, you know, their work with them, um, you know, I'm not, I, I'll turn this into a, a Blue Cross promotional commercial. I'm not going to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm very grateful. I'm P-Hip. I love oh, Blue P -Hip. Cross. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Don't you have a JD? I do. I do. How'd you know that? Because I'm looking the, at the city, city council. Uh, yeah, I guess I did put that out there. Um, yeah, I am. Um, okay, here it is. Um, I went in pre-pharmacy. Realized I didn't like math that much. Um, decided to go pre-law and for pre-law because since my uncle worked at a law firm in Fairfield, Alabama, um, I did um, um, I did history and anthropology, but the history wow. was under the field of pre-law. So when I got out of school, I went to um, Faulkner has a um, so almost it used to be like a night school. Um, I mean, it used to be um, in Montgomery, and um, I went to um, I went there and I got my um, 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 doctorate and um, uh, commuted back and forth to Helena to a Blue Cross. I know people who've done that. Yeah, okay. So um, I got my law degree and um, I did a lot of pro bono law around Shelby County for a while, but Blue Cross provided the insurance for my whole family. In law, I would have to provide my own insurance. I could build a firm and my uncle died, so I couldn't go work for him. So um, yeah, I got my JD, um, but I ended up being a technology support manager at Blue Cross. I worked the um, night shift. I worked the night shift for 16 of those years. Okay. So I didn't know anybody. Um, that's the reason I did the um, the No Sleep in Helena blog was because um, I was awake all night. Yeah. And so I would sleep during the daytime and then get up um, when the kids came home from school. Oh, so, awesome. I did not know that. That's yeah, that's where the No Sleep came from. The Gnome, the gnome actually came from, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, okay. Um, there was a woman in Helena who discovered in the, her backyard, which backed up to woods, that there had been kids who stole gnomes from everywhere in Shelby and Jefferson County. Now, these kids had arranged the gnomes in a circle around um, She had a uh, looking ball, a, um, a silver ball on a podium. They had arranged the gnomes in um, circles around that, and the... Um, um, she called and said, okay, I think these are stolen. And the police came and someone, someone, it got out that this was there. And then all of a sudden they disappeared in one night. And um, I posted on the blog and I loved it so much. And um, I, I Googled, you know, lost gnomes or something and came up with the idea of a gnome hunt. And that's how the whole gnomes got incorporated. Oh, in that's blog. awesome. So I was working night shift and um, that story about gnomes just cracked me up. So, uh, it is. It, it didn't. I didn't mean for it to stick. It was just supposed to be a one-time blog thing, and um, but then you know, um, parents were asking about it, and so I continued doing it for a while. I love it. I love that story. What year was that? Oh gosh, um, gosh, I started the blog in '99. Um, the year of the gnome, it had to be in the early 2000s. Um, okay. Yeah, I could not tell you the actual year. Um, I don't know if you remember OJ. She was um, the officer from Helena, the female officer at the schools. Um, she was mm -hmm. the officer who investigated it. And that's where I uh, heard from the story <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. Awesome. So what do you like to do for fun? Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I know this sounds, this sounds like, I, you know, I really do like doing, um, serving the community and going to events. Um, I, you know, I attend, um, um, you know, especially when I was healthy, I attended all the events. Um, I still like doing Facebook posts, even though I don't have the blog anymore. Um, if, if someone has something and invites me, by golly, I want to show up and actually see it. Um, if there's a new business, um, I used to really enjoy going to the restaurants and listening to music. 
I don't mm. do that. I kind of miss that. That was a lot of fun. Um, but I see the city council work and the planning and zoning and, you know, going to invites to HOA meetings. And um, I'm also on the, um, the board for um, two by two animal rescue. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And so there's a, a lot of volunteer opportunities that, um, and I think um, I just finished being president of the Lions Club in Helena. So there's a lot of things that pancakes. I do. Pancakes. I think of pancakes when you say yes. Helena Lions oh, Qantas. Club. You think about Qantas. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The, the, no, the Lions are the glasses and the Qantas do the pancakes. Um, okay. So that, that's how I remembered it. Yeah, I was part of the Qantas for a little bit. So, you know, I've done a lot of activities. And then my wife has, you know, things for her school. They'll have football games or um, we got season tickets. So, I mean, there's always something to do. Um, so, I mean, that, that's what I really do. Now, if, if, if I was trapped at home like I was, you know, the past two weeks, um, I'm a podcast guy. I think you and I were talking about podcast. Um, um, I, what is I listen- the name of your podcast? Well, no, I used to have a podcast, but okay. I'm a big fan of listening to podcasts. Um, um, I haven't quite gotten to the crime podcast that everybody likes. Um, I listen to the history podcast. Um, I listen, you know, I'm a big Tolkien fan. Um, I, I listen to, there's someone called the Tolkien Professor, and he has like four different podcasts that he, he does lectures for students. I listen to all of that. Uh, we're yeah, all I do history. like history. Yeah. I- Audible has some great series, too, on histories I've listened to. The history of China, the history of Russia. So, I mean, that's what I do for entertainment. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. Um, I read a lot. Of, I'll sit in bed and either listen to a podcast or go through Facebook or um, news on the phone. I mean, that's my entertainment. So what are your dreams for the future? Uh, the dreams. You know, that, that's a hard question. It's almost like, what's your favorite color? It depends, you know if it's, if I'm wearing it or if I'm looking at, you know, um, my, okay. My small dreams is that, um, is a completion of, um, the widening of 261 and 52. <laughs> That's that because everybody who's, who asked me, they go, what, what about the traffic? Helena has horrible traffic. If I had one dream that I could magically do, I would fix the bypass and the widening of 261 and 52. Uh, those are my, like my small dreams. And now there's another dream that I don't think people really think about. Um, Helena has gotten a federal grant to create a greenway, one of the largest greenways actually in, um, in, um, in central Alabama. Um, it would a add, Ken- well, it's, um, you know how the Hillsboro Parkway has that wide way that goes through the woods and goes through neighborhoods yes. and yes. eventually will connect to shopping centers. Um, ours would connect all the schools together with that same size trail, a very wide trail. And it would connect um, the Helena Amphitheater, the sports complex. Um, there's actually a second phase that would connect the Fieldstone neighborhood to the high school. I mean, there's this huge network that um, I, I think I posted it on the blog way back when, but now I'm actually the person in charge of it. So if, if I could accomplish one thing, if I could go out, you know, if I could be a, the Mark Hall, if I could have my Mark Hall moment where I go out on top, it would be complete, completing the widening of 261.52 and that greenway because we've got the money for it. It's just, we got to get it through all the permissions. And I so want to get that done before I go. You know, one thing I'd like, you know, where Walmart is a service road and then where you can turn left at a light. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Um, you know, you know, I just came up with that. Sorry, go ahead. You know that shopping center where Helena Tire used to be? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. The plans are actually, and we, and we actually have this on city council agenda, the one of the turn lanes. I've got to but, go. I've got to go to this. Well, place. we're going to have it online this time, so you'll be able to come. Yeah. Um, you'll be able to visit this one. Um, the, the, the plan is, is that Alabama, who owns that road, will now allow us to have just a bunch of turn lanes. I don't think we want that either. That would be just too much congestion. They will allow one turn lane and all the businesses in that area will have to hit that one turn lane. So what's going to happen is that there's going to be a road that's going to connect 261 over to um, that road next to um, Walmart. So there is Wyndham Parkway, I think. Yes. If that's the name of it. Yeah. Wyndham Parkway. Um, So that's going to be a connecting road. Now the stoplight, anytime you're dealing with Shelby County roads or Alabama roads, which is basically all the major roads in Helena, I mean, the city owns the neighborhood roads. Anytime you deal with that, 
you have um, the state saying, well, you don't really need a stoplight or Shelby County going, oh, you don't really need a stoplight. So, I mean, it's going to be a fight to, to get a stoplight there. But um, there is a plan for a road. In fact, um, if, a service type road. So yeah, that. The, the Freddy's, the Chick-fil-A, all those will turn on to a new road and that road will lead in and out of that shopping center. Awesome. So Huey, as we talked about, you are an active member of Helena, a very active member. You know, the people of this community are amazing. They really yeah. are. They work so hard. And But I'm going to read a list. Um, Huey is a council liaison for city building, planning, and development department. Helena Planning and Zoning Commission. Helena Art Council. We love art. Um, Helena History Preservation. Board of Directors, Okahaba HOA from 2010 to 2012. And that's no small HOA, is it? That's a huge... Oh, no. Okahaba is a small city. <laughs> it really yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Um, Friends of Helena Schools Education Foundation. Friends of Helena Library, Daniel. Yes, um, Dan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dan the man. Yes, he is. Uh, <laughs> Helena Athletic Association. Helena Farmer Market Committee, 2009 to current. Um, Buck Creek Festival, 2010 to 2013. Helena U.S. Census Committee, 2010. That's when I moved here, too. I made oh, it wow. just okay. in the nick of time to claim myself a, as a Helenaite. Yes. Um, Helena Soccer Coach, 2006 to 2008. I was very skinny for that. Well, I think we all were probably a little skinny. And <laughs> Those were great years. I could run, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sunday school teacher, 2004 and to 2009. And writer for a No Sleep in Helena community news blog, which we just heard the genesis, what let, came, what we just learned about it. Um, <laughs> So why don't you tell us a little about your activity and why do you do it? I know why, but. Oh, well, see, you know, that, that some of this is like, you know, things I used to do. Um, I retired the blog um, when I became city, you know, first off, you know, I was, I was sick in the hospital and it, it just, it took hours. I mean, I, just what you're doing here is taking so much time, I know for yourself and the blog was just eating a Love lot of it. time. And then when I was city council president, there was no point in restarting it because, um, you know, part of the blog was telling everything and that sometimes when you're city council president, I can't tell everybody every single thing because there's confidentiality agreements. And then there's, um, what if it doesn't show? Everybody's going to say, well, you said that, you know, um, a bowling alley was coming. Why didn't it come? Well, a lot of times these people come to us and say, hey, this is coming. And then they change their mind. And it goes away. Right. Um, let's, see, let's go to the big ones. Um, Council liaison for city building, planning, development. Um, that's basically two guys. Um, that, that's a very long title. Um, that, that's, you know, Chad and Chad is just awesome. Um, that's, I think I met Chad. Chad, do yeah. I know you? Okay, yeah, well, ahead. if you're in real estate, you met Chad. Absolutely. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, I've, I've gone through a lot of stages of what I am on that. Um, I'm the council liaison for it currently. Um, I've actually um, gone through and became a certified municipal city planner. I had to actually go to the University of North Alabama and take classes wow. to um, learn all the laws in the state in regards to planning and zoning. So now I serve as the council liaison for it. I think um, when I so first- So your JD it helped is what yeah, led I, So I got my law degree. And then um, on top of that, I went ahead and got certified. And, and the official title is a- Certified Planning and Zoning Official. Um, I went ahead awesome. and got that. Um, Catherine Ennis encouraged me to do that. Um, and it, it taught me so much. I think I was, um, at the time, I was grow, grow, grow. Um, let's get the high school. Let's just grow. And I think when I took that certification, it changed the way I, I started thinking about how Helena grows. It made me uh, become more of a, um, a smart growth planner. And I think that um, anytime, I know people get mad when I vote no on a lot of things, but when I vote no, there's a very logical reason I vote no. 
because uh -huh. if you make a mistake growing a city, you are stuck with that mistake for 25 to 50 years, maybe even 100 years. Once you make a mistake, it's very difficult to, un to undo. So when I vote no or I oppose something, it's not because I will, would, I'm against it forever. It's just it's got to be done right. Because if you do it wrong, oh gosh, I've already seen examples all the time in Helena where, you know, talking about the intersections where something was done wrong because they weren't thinking what's going to be what's going to be like in 20 years. Right. So I, I really want to convince, you know, people who are running, people who are voting in the city, that we've got to become a smart community when it comes to planning growth, because we're not doing that right now. I think we're we're um, we've had so much of our land converted to residential and not mm -hmm. much planning on balancing that out with the roads and with um, with um, um, businesses and stuff. We've got to be better at doing that because what's going to happen is that people aren't going to want to live here because it's too congested or there's rundown shopping centers or there's rundown neighborhoods. People are going to stop. It's going to stop making Helena special. So, um, you know, that's probably where I'm you can kind of tell that's kind of where I'm passionate about right now. Yeah. Um, um, I, I think we've made some bad decisions. Um, I think we need to make smarter decisions. Um, uh, we want to continue to grow, but really in a smart way, um, in a way that takes into account what the city is going to look like in 50 years. Now, I know everybody's not going to I'll still be selling years. real estate. I'll yes, still be putting yes. those signs out in 50 years. Yeah, I'll there be will be. And there, and three, but yeah. <laughs> there's so much growth left, but I think a lot of people aren't thinking that long of terms, and we have to. We have to start we doing that. We've got Old Town Helena. We've got, you know, the nature part of um, the Greenway. Now that I know what it's called, yes. instead of just a walking path. Yeah. Um, just there's so much charm in Helena. And as a realtor, this is what, er, there's so much desire to live here. You like, I had a, a list. I'm not trying to sell myself, I promise. No, but just an example, I had a listing in uh, Plantation South. Yes, yes. Signed the listing early March, planned to put it on April 1st. March 13th happened. We were like, oh, no, it's, yeah. what's going to happen? Uh, so it went live. Um, then on, I mean, on April 1st, April 2nd, we had 17 showings. Wow. This is during the shutdown. Yeah, And then yeah. April 3rd, boom. So that's how that's the demand in Helena to live here to be to be part of this awesome community where everybody's friendly. Yes. Um, hey, I'm going to keep talking. Magic. No, uh, no, no, Helena has sort of a very magical feel to it. I mean, if you just kind of look at the whole his the whole reason we're called Helena is because um, two people fell in love. You know, yeah. you look at other cities. I'm not going to pick. I love picking on one city. I'm not going to pick on it. John Light. Go I'm not ahead. Gonna, does say anything? No, I can do it. But, um, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna say it, but other Hello. cities, you look at the way they got their names and, and how they grew and Helena grew from a love story. I mean, and that's just the greatest thing. And even Old Town Helena, Old Town Helena is, um, parts of it is actually a recreation. I mean, people decided, you know, here's a picture of what Old Town looked like. I'm gonna, you know, redo my building to keep that look. I mean, it shouldn't have happened. I did not know that. I thought it was all original. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. There's parts of it that are completely new, but they're original. I know a tornado but... came through. Yes. That, Greg that Akara told me about, like, the house he's in was over there by the school, I think. And yeah. got hit by a tornado, and they moved it to, to its location. And the Love depot, you, Greg and Donna Akara. Go ahead. And the depot was further down the tracks, and it was like, the depot has a plaque. I think it has a plaque. Maybe it doesn't have a plaque. It's one of the few buildings that has survived every major disaster in Helena. I mean, the, the depot, <laughs> Hamburger Depot, is a magical building because... Um, it is. Um, it's just yeah, sticks. Got, Helena got burned down one time. It got burned down from um, Union troops um, because it was, a you know, they were producing too much, you know, coal. Um, Helena got burned down by Union troops. Helena got wiped out in a flood. So it was like fire, water, wind. We got um, destroyed by tornadoes. And the depot, for some reason, some strange reason, no matter where it was located, it survived every single disaster. So, I mean, I, I think there's a plaque there. There may not be a plaque there, but just know that the luckiest building in Helena is the depot. I mean, it's, you know, if, if there's a disaster, if there's an asteroid coming to Helena, go run in that building because that's going to be the only one that survives. 
That is so awesome. I'm, I'm coming. I, thank you. I did not know that. Uh, I, I think we should stories. do a, 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 a short podcast on the history of Polina. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. We got to have Ken Pinhell. Ken yeah. Pinhell. It's like this. He's a wealth of information. Oh, I've been in this museum. museum. Yeah. He does it for free. I think people think that um, Ron Hawley in the caboose, he does that for free. Uh, Ken runs the entire museum. He does that for free. Half that stuff is out of his house. I mean, he, he like collects that stuff. So, I mean, we're very fortunate. I mean, we don't have the budget like Hoover or Alabaster, but we have people who are willing to do things they love and share it with others. I mean, they're doing it for free. Uh, yeah, and I've got the book. I, I think Ken wrote. Um, yeah. Was it he called? Did. I bought I it know. shortly after I moved here. It says Helena, Alabama in the title, but it's, um, I think it's just called Helena, Alabama. And then it has like a, a small subtitle. But it has a picture of a baseball team or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, coming to Helena, I had lived, um, like, I lived in New York City and then Sydney, Australia, and then I oh, moved wow. to Birmingham, and I lived in uh, Cabo Heights behind the summit, yeah. and just aggressive driving like this, and I got tired of paying sewer in Jefferson County and yeah. came, saw some houses in Helena, fell in love, this is where I wanted to be. And my first day driving to work, I'm in there and I got to turn right. And I'm like, people got to let me out. And they did. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're going to let me turn right here? And, then, and I'm like, found it. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, um, We're all I, sympathetic I to hour. each other. Huh? I, I actually have to leave. I leave early in the morning just to avoid the rush to get out of Helena. And every time I get, I have to leave late and get in the rush, I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm on the city council. Surely I can do something to change this, you know? And, um, you know, that's when we start calling senators and stuff. And, you know, I honestly will say, if we, if we are able to get 261 four lane, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, Mark, out of everybody in Helena, you know, Pelham played a part, Hoover played a part. Mark Hall, that, I mean, that's going to be a tribute to him if we get that four lane because he's done so much work for it. Let's now, call um, it Mark Hall Road or yeah. Parkway. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell Mark Hall all the time, I said, listen, you got City Hall named after you. You don't need anything else named after you. you yeah. Know, anything with a, yeah. You got Pelham Hall named after you. You got, you know, you know, Alabaster City Hall named You don't need anything now. He wouldn't. He's not that type of guy. He would not want that. anything ever named after him. I know it. I know it. And every meeting I've been to where he was at, and it's just a handful. Yeah, infrastructure, he is. Infrastructure, road infrastructure. And he's yes. like, I'm trying, people. I'm trying. He does. I mean, he, I mean, that's the biggest thing that the mayor, you know, the biggest critical thing the mayor has to do is keep those relationships. Because right now we're on the short list to have the widening of 261 but it only takes one political move for someone to bump us down further in the list. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to constantly, you know, be talking to people in Montgomery that we don't lose our spot. I mean, it's our time. We paid our money in. It's time for Helena's traffic issues. Oh, I sound like a politician now. It's no, time for our going. traffic issues no. to be resolved. No, so, you, sorry. You, you sound like you and like a concerned citizen. And Yeah, yeah. I get mad about that when other places get stuff done and we don't get that money. Oh, no, no. It's our time. We're getting it, you know. Um, when I moved to Helena, I was a certifiable paralegal. That's how I know. So I'm a, you know, JD <laughs> and all that. I even tried law school. And I went, no. Um, but I be, I'd say I became a realtor because of rush hour. <laughs> Trying to yes. get to downtown, you know, from, from Helena. No, I became a realtor because that's what I wanted to do. I got tired right. of working for lawyers. So, <laughs> yeah, downtown. Love your lawyers. Love you. If you need a house, call me. Go ahead. <laughs> Again, let me emphasize I have a law degree, but I'm a technology support manager. I'm yes. here to help you with your technology. So, and your city government. So, yes, and, my, and how we get around Helena. Um, Huey, thank you for all that you do for our beautiful community. Um, you're running for re election for city council. Place five, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, do you want to tell us all about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, you have to make a platform, you know, a very short platform to kind of tell what you're about. And, um, you know, the, the first thing 
that, you know, the first thing bullet point I have is talking about um, mitigating traffic congestion. And the way to do that is um, to complete the um, road projects, um, get the grant money, look for opportunities to take care of bad intersections, um, to widen the roads of 261 and 52, um, to get the bypass, which is supposed to take place from 261 all the way around to 52 West. Um, that, that is my first goal is to make sure that we resolve these issues with traffic. The second one is, is a, re a reason a lot of people come to Helena is that um, it's the Helena schools, um, supporting the Helena schools. We have um, on city council, we have the ability to use the education sales tax to do projects for the school, to do education for our students. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, I would love by the time I leave office that Helena has a number one school system in the state, you know, and I would love for to us to actually have um, the, the ability to say that more of our students go on to better jobs and better lives because they lived in Helena. I mean, that would be a huge pride point for me. And the last one is um, another reason people move here is public safety. Um, if, if Helena had a horrible crime rate, if, if we were on the news every single day for something horrible happening in Helena, then, you know, that, that would just not only kill the business, that would kill um, you know, the city. So, you know, supporting the, the police department, the fire department, um, the safety of our citizens is a really big point um, that we've got to make sure. And, you know, and everybody's got to feel safe in the city. I mean, not only do we need to have better statistics, but we need to have happier, safer people that um, whether it's a violent crime or whether it's something as reducing domestic abuse, which is really hard to combat. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to make sure that we stop that in Helena and that everybody is educated in Helena and that, you know, we have a very, you know, positive feeling just being here and everybody yeah. feels safe. I think I may have repeated that one twice, but that's okay. Oh, well, yeah, you know, safety matters to right. wherever you are. And I've never felt concerned here. Yeah, and safety. if I see a fender bender, there's three cops right there. Yes, yeah, and they're and they're really good about it. I mean, I, I think we have a grant coming for four more police officers, but um, oh. but I mean that's just a grant because we can't afford to 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 pay them ourselves. We got to find a way to make sure that we have the adequate number of police officers at three o'clock in the morning. If you need help, we want to get a police officer there to help you. And so yeah. I mean I think that's the way it is. Uh, I was about to say um, um safety schools and um, traffic. So um th those are kind of my platform for uh, what I'm going to do next year. Oh, that's really awesome. Like that's awesome. Thank you so much, y'all. Mm -hmm. August 25th, please go to the sports complex and vote. Um, I may do absentee. Can I do absentee? Yeah, well, the only rule of absentee is that you need to say that you'll be out of the city on that day. And to be honest with you, you know, we're five minutes away before we're out of the city. So yeah, if, if anyone's not feeling well or if anyone, you know, um, is going to have to be working that day. Yeah, please absentee ballot. You do that at City Hall. Um, there will Here be a in Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll uh, Amanda Traywick, the city clerk, will be able to answer questions about if someone wants to run or about the election. She's our official election um, chair, not chair, but um, our official election official. Clerk. Which, uh, yeah, um, um, she's our city clerk, Amanda Traywick, and she's the uh, election official um, for the I city. I think of I may Florida. have bothered her. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda's awesome. She really is. Yeah, it's fifty dollars to run for mayor or twenty five dollars you want to run for city council. That's so. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I thank you so much um for taking the time and um you look so well considering you. you just look well. Thank you. Thank you. That's be I always try to have a positive attitude, you know, no matter what. So that's right. And you you're so far and may it continue, you're blessed that um, yes. has not gotten worse. Yeah, I'm so very lucky. Got when will you be out of the woods? Um, I think, um, honestly, I think that I'm six, um, I'm 17 out days out right now from initial exposure. I think I am, but I think um, I'm still, you know, the, still playing it safe. I don't have a fever or any symptoms. Um, I still feel a bit tired, but um, I, I think I'm, I'm safe, but I'm going to wait um, another um, probably five, five, four more days before I actually go out in public. I think there's a campaign event coming up that I like to uh, attend. Hillsborough. So, 
the Hillsboro event, yes. Yeah, I'm going to crash it. I don't know. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to try try to go to that um, if I can. Um, yeah. So, but we have a plan. We have a city council meeting on Monday, and then we have um, the Hillsboro event. No, the Hillsboro event is actually on Thursday. It's the same night as city as planning and zoning. So oh, I may be the I may be the only candidate who can't go to the campaign event in Hillsboro. Bless. So people in Hillsboro, please don't hold that against me. But I can't miss meetings. I can't no. run for an office and then miss meetings going to campaign events. So you know, send me. a surrogate. Yes. Send your wife with that awesome with face that, shield. The, the shield there, yes. <laughs> that was so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love that pose. Well, I thank you so much um, for taking the time. Thank you, Huey. You're welcome.